I'm thrilled to have Mahesh Swaminathan, the Senior Vice President for Global Business Vertical at McDermott International. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you. Thanks for inviting me to talk to you. Just an introduction. Could you tell us more about what you do? So, I mean, McDermott is a company based out of the U.S. So we've been in the energy infrastructure business for 100 years. We actually celebrated our 100th year last year. We were the first ones to install offshore platforms. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've been carrying on that legacy around the world for many years. Nice. And you've been active in Africa for the last 50 years. Could you share some details about your current projects on the continent? And how does this align with Africa's growing demand for energy and sustainable solutions? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, McDermott, as I said, has been around the world. And uh, Africa has had its share in terms of the projects. I have to say we are actually um, between, as I said, there are two verticals. One is the what we call as the low carbon vertical, which is the e-drive onshore LNG and the you know um, energy transition projects. And then the second vertical is the offshore vertical. Mm -hmm. So the low carbon vertical is a lot more active in Africa for the last few years. And they have a larger share of projects, particularly LNG projects like in Mozambique. And then they are in the process of uh, you know executing the feed for Rovuma as well. They're also there in uh, executing projects in Uganda, Putilanga, etc. So they have been quite active. Um, our part of the business, which is the uh, subsea and deep water, uh, mm -hmm. has been active only in the last few years. Uh, we entered the Angolan market and then we are trying to actively look at Namibia, etc. So we are trying to bring now both verticals into Africa as Africa grows. Yeah. And given your expertise in LNG um, import facilities and natural gas, gas processing, how do you see the development of gas infrastructure in Africa addressing both climate change and energy poverty simultaneously? Yeah, I mean, what Africa is currently going through, I mean, is not different from what other continents go through. So we are actually in the midst of doing the same, say, for example, in Asia and South America which are again going through the same and probably a little bit ahead of Africa in terms of, on one hand, you have Europe saying, cut back on all oil and gas projects, but then Asia and Africa and Southern America is saying, let's first get electricity into people's homes and then get the industrialization going, right? Yeah. So we are following that path. But having said that, I think from our perspective, there are two or three things we look differently. We do know that energy projects are here to stay for a period of time. But how do we then help from a sustainable perspective is we do three things. One is in the facilities that we build for our customers, we make sure that they are reduced in emissions over mm. the period of the time. Like the e-drive LNG, which is electric drive LNG, as I said. The second thing is what we do in terms of our operations. We are essentially a large EPCI contractor. So we use fabrication facilities. We use marine assets to do the work. So our marine assets are, again, very sustainable in terms of fuel efficiency. I mean, one of our vessels recently got certified as Sustain 1, the first one in the world, oh. right? Similarly, our fabrication yards heavily depend on solar and other forms of energy mm -hmm. so that we can bring down the carbon footprint. The third aspect is, apart from our oil and gas projects, we are also trying to do some amount of energy transition projects where there is adjacency, such as helping out on some of the big HVDC projects, etc., related to the wind. So by doing this, not only are we, uh, you know, helping the economy in terms of keeping the oil and gas projects going, but we do it in a more responsible and sustainable way. Those are fantastic projects that you have going. Um, in the short, medium and the long term, especially with a focus for Africa, um, in the areas of natural gas infrastructure, um, what are your, your plans? What are your thoughts for the next short, medium and long term? So I think two separate things. One is, as I said, in the East Africa, um, the low carbon solutions business is actually heavily into LNG projects, which as I said, Mozambique and then similarly on Rovuma. When you come to the West Africa, I mean, we are already in uh, Angola, mm -hmm. where it's uh, tiebacks and gas projects largely, and then possibly next into Namibia, etc. Similarly, so again, uh, there are one, one group will continue to look at deep water developments, bringing gas and oil from deep waters in a sustainable manner to onshore. And then the other group is looking at then converting that gas either for industries locally or LNG for export. So we are trying to play both sides, as I said. <laughs>
And just my, my final question is, where do you see the value of African Energy Week? You know, our theme for this year is invest in African energy. And how do you see it advancing energy projects on the continent? So I think uh, coming to uh, a conference like this actually then helps you understand effectively what's happening. Because, you know, Africa being a very large continent, for someone like me who comes all the way from elsewhere, right? So it's difficult for us to be able to go and meet all the people that we want to meet, which you can do in one go. For example, we have a project, we have projects and stuff going on in Angola. So I was in a panel with Angola. Everyone I had to meet was on that panel, nine people. So in a matter of two or three hours, you get to see all the people that you want. I think yeah. that's the biggest thing. And then you also get to hear at the same time various things and various things in people's minds and their strategies and their policies, you know, in the various forums. So it gives a much better idea for you in terms of how you want to operate in the continent. So that's the greatness of having an event like this. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. It has been amazing to speak with you. No, thank you. Thanks for calling me and then having this chat. Thank you very much.